everyone, it's Stacey. Christmas is just around the corner, so I thought it's time to get cracking with some small Christmas projects. Today I'm going to show you how to make this really cute Christmas ornament coaster. So to make our cute little Christmas ornament coaster, you're going to need to cut all these different pieces of fabric, and you could either take a screenshot of this now so you've got it handy, or you can find it over on my website and I'll put a link in the description below. But basically you're going to need to cut one piece for the A fabric, which is the main ornament at three and a half inches by three and a half inches. And then the top of the ornament is the C piece, which is one piece at one inch by one and a half inches. And then all the rest of the fabric is this background here. And I've got what you need to cut here on my diagram. And you'll also need to cut one piece for the back, and that's at five inches by five inches squared, as well as a piece of batting. So I've got all my pieces cut out here and the first thing I'm going to do is take my B pieces and I've got four cut at one quarter inch squared and what I'm going to do is face them wrong sides down and I'm going to draw a diagonal line from corner to corner. So as you can see I've just got a line there from each corner and I'll just repeat that for all four pieces. Okay, once I've done that I'm going to take my A piece which is for my main ornament and then what we're going to do is we're going to sew these on to each of the corners and then we're going to sew along this diagonal line like that. Okay, so we'll do them one at a time. So I've got my standard foot on, I'm stitching at stitch length 2.5 and I'm using my regular Gudeman thread. And what I've done is I've placed those little squares with the diagonal line right sides together. And I'm just going to sew along that line there. I'm not going to worry about a pin because it's just such a small space I'll have to take it out anyway to sew. So just starting at the beginning, at the very edge rather of the fabric and sewing along that line that we drew. Okay, and then I'll trim the threads. So we don't worry about a back stitch. I'm just gonna trim the threads. I'm not gonna trim them too closely because we do have to press them and cut them and I just don't want that stitching to come undone. But what I am gonna do is turn it and come to the next corner, place it right sides together, line up those edges and then sew along that line again, and I'll do that for all four sides. Okay, and once we've done that, let's just trim off that excess. So now what I'm going to do is take my ruler, come along to the lines that I drew on the diagonal, place my ruler on top, so the quarter inch mark on my ruler is lined up on the line that I drew and my stitches and I'm just going to cut that excess off. And I'll do that for all four sides. I'm trying out this new cutter and I keep forgetting how to open and close it. It's new to me. I have my other cutter for about 14 years. But I decided to try this one because I think it's easier to change the blade on. I'll give you an update on that later. So we're doing that for all four sides. There we go. Now let's quickly press that. So just for each of the corners, I'm just going to push it over, give it a finger press and press it. I mean, we could set the stitches if we want, but this is not going to be a cool top. It's just going to be a little decoration for Christmas time. And I'll do that on all four corners. We do want it sitting nicely. So if you need to, you could use a bit of starch. I've only just turned my iron on so it might not be hot enough. There we go, the light's just turned. Maybe a bit of steam. So I'll just turn it over this way, just to encourage it to sit nicely. Okay, 
Okay, that's looking better. I can work with that. So now let's just move on to the next step. So now I've just got my C piece and my two D pieces. Let's sew them together. So now I've put my quarter inch foot on and for the rest of this project, I will be using my quarter inch foot. What we need to do is we need to take our C piece and sew a D piece onto either side of it. So I'll just take one piece for now, fold it right sides together, line up all those edges on the sides, and then I'm just going to sew them together. Again, not worrying about a back stitch. Or pins. You can if you want to for this step. Always use pins if you find them helpful. Then I'll just open it up, take the second piece, face that right sides together, and sew that. Trimming the thread as I go, but not too close because it is a little bit fiddly and I don't want my stitches to come undone while I'm doing my working. Now let's give that a press. So I've got it here sewn together and you can see I've got my D pieces sewn on either side of my C piece. I'm just going to turn it over Push those seams in towards the center and give it a press. I did end up starching the other piece, by the way, just so it was sitting nicely and, well, nice and flat, that is. Okay, now let's sew this piece, the top of the ornament, to the main part of the ornament. So as you can see, this top piece is bigger than the bottom piece, and that's because we're going to sew it together and trim it. I thought it was easier to do that than start cutting tiny little pieces and trying to match it up perfectly. But what we do want to do is we want to place the center piece or the top of the ornament in the center of this ornament. So I'm just going to do that by eye. And then once I'm happy, I'm just going to fold it down right sides together lining up these edges you can also then open it up this way to make sure you're still happy with where it's going to sit and then i will just pop a pin in at this point because it's getting a little bit bigger to work with and we don't forget we want these edges all lined up and now i'm just going to sew along that edge coming right past the edge where I can see but not coming off the edge of that top piece there we don't need to trimming that thread and now we're going to press again so now we're just going to press it so it's sitting up I haven't been setting the stitches because it is just ornamental but my OCD is getting the better of me so there we go I've just set them let's push that up give it a finger press and when we're happy press it in place And then what we're going to do is just trim that excess off on both sides. So now all I'm going to do is take my ruler, line it up on the edge of my ornament and cut it a straight line. So we're cutting off that excess there. But what I am going to do is I'm going to take a line of my ruler and line it up on the seam that we just sewed so I know that it's really nice and straight. And I'll do the same on the other side. Again, finding that line in my seam. Now I've also now I've got a nice straight line on that side. And then I'm just cutting off this excess here. Okay, let's start sewing on the rest of the background. So now I've got the piece I've, we've just been working on and I've got my two E pieces here and we're just going to sew them to either side of our ornament. So all I'll do is place one piece right sides together on one side, lining up the edges. Now again, I decided that it was better to make it slightly bigger and then to trim it. I just, I just will flip it over to the side with all the seams so I can make sure I'm sewing them down nicely. Once I'm happy that that edge is all lined up, I will just pop a pin in 
and then I'm just going to sew along that edge, not worrying about a back stitch, and I'll do the same for the other side. Oh, and you can see that seam wants to be pushed up. I'm just going to keep my needle down, lift my foot up and fix it, and then carry on. Now let's press that open and trim again. So just setting the stitches because we did before so we might as well carry on. Opening it up, finger pressing it so it's sitting really nicely along that seam there and then pressing. And then I'll do the same on this side. And now let's just trim that excess off again. So now we're just going to trim off the excess along the bottom and along the top. So just turn it to the side, take that edge there and line up my ruler on it. I can also see that my ruler is lined up on a seam so I know it's nice and straight. Oh, sorry. Just realigning to cut that bit that I just missed. Turning it around and doing it this, exactly the same on the other side. Oh gosh, I'm having technical difficulties here. I'm not pressing hard enough with my new cutter. Okay, there we go. So now we'll do the final piece by sewing our F pieces onto the top and the bottom. So taking one of our F pieces, placing it right sides together at the top or the bottom, it doesn't matter which order you do it in, making sure all those edges are lined up nicely. I'm going to flip it over so, I'm doing, so I can see my seams as I'm sewing. And then I will just pop one pin in just to make sure it's staying in place. Okay, and then just sewing along that seam like we have the others and I'll repeat the same process for the bottom strip. Okay, let's press. So I'll just set the stitches again, turn it over, finger press the top up and make sure there's no creases there and press. And the same for the bottom. And now we're just going to trim it down to 5 inches by 5 inches squared. So like I said, we're going to trim our block to 5 inches by 5 inches squared. And I did make it a little bit bigger because I think it's easier to trim it down rather than trying to make it to the perfect size. So I'm going to take my ruler and the seam here, I'm going to place a 1 inch, well the 1 inch line on that seam. And then I can also see that there's another seam here. I'll place that line on my ruler on that seam so I know it's really nice and square. And I'll just trim off this excess. Then I'm going to turn it around and do exactly the same on this side. And that should be measuring 5 inches. So you can also check that. Um, I can see on my ruler that this is zero and over on here is five. So just check that. If it's a little bit off, you might just want to move your ruler over a little bit so we are getting it at five inches. It doesn't matter, to be honest, if it's not perfectly five inches. It's just a coaster. So, and we're not, it's not blocks that we've got to sew together in the future. So now we've got the two sides trimmed. So what I'm going to do is, is turn it around and at the top I'm going to cut it so it's three quarters of an inch away from the seam line. So placing my ruler on top, finding the three quarter inch mark. And then I'm going to trim that excess off. Again, I'm just lining up other, like the edge of the block here and my seam there so I know it's all nice and square. And then what I'm going to do is turn it around and measure 5 inches.
again lining up some lines at the top and the bottom as well so I can see that's perfectly five inches and now I'm going to trim the excess and I realized I was having trouble cutting because I was trying to do it sitting down I'm used to doing it standing up so now we've worked out that problem and there we go we have our little coaster top completed at five inches by five inches squared now let's sew it all together so now I'm just going to take my batting and my backing and I've cut them also at 5 inches by 5 inches squared. Place my batting down first, my backing with the right sides up, lining up all the edges. Then I'm going to take my little coaster top, turn it down so it's right sides down and the wrong sides facing me and I'm lining up all those edges. Then what I'll do is I'll take some pins and I like to pop them in the corners like that, securing it for when we sew it all together. If you'd like to, you can use more pins, but I think that's enough. Now what we need to do is we need to sew around the entire edge, but we need to leave an opening. So I like to leave the opening on a side, not at the top or the bottom. So I'll leave an opening of about two, two and a half inches on one of the sides. So let's sew that together. So don't forget to leave an opening if you needed to. You could use a chalk marker just to mark where you're going to start and stop. I'm going to start about here, about one and a half inches from the bottom, go all the way around and then stop again at about one and a half inches down. And I will do a back stitch because when you turn it right sides out, it can pull at it and then the stitches come undone a little bit and it, it just looks nicer if you do a back stitch at the beginning and end. So when I come down to the corner, I'm going to do my best guess at a quarter inch seam allowance, leave my needle down, lift my foot up and turn and that was perfect. If it wasn't perfect, I'd either reverse back a stitch or keep going until it was correct. And now I'm on the side that I started on, I'm just going to stitch down a little bit, do a back stitch, and trim my threads. So now we're just going to trim off the excess on all the corners so that when we turn it right sides out it's going to sit really nicely. So I'm just going to trim off those corners being careful of my stitches, we don't want to cut our stitches. Okay, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to find the opening and I want to go between the two pieces of fabric, not between the batting. I'm going to pop my fingers in and then find the bottom here and then grab it and pull it through. And now we're just pushing it through the best we can. Then what we're going to do is just give those corners a bit of a push and I've got a point turner. You could use anything blunt. I know some people like to use a chopstick, but just make sure it's blunt because you can accidentally push through too hard and then put a hole in your work and we don't want that. So just get all those corners sitting really nicely. It can be a bit fiddly. Okay, that looks good to me. Now let's give it one more press. So the first thing we want to do is find the opening and we want to make sure that's all folded in nicely and sitting so that we can sew along that edge and close it up like it was never there. So once you're happy that it's sitting really nicely, just give that a press. And then we can give the whole thing a press. We just want to check that it is all sitting nicely. You can give it... um like a bit of a roll to make sure it's not all sort of the seams aren't still stuck in there like that. Just make sure it's sitting nicely and then just give it one press. You can see how much cuter that already looks with a press. 
Now what we're going to do is sew a top stitch, which is decorative, but it also closes up our opening. So finding our opening, and I will just pop a pin in to make sure that it's sitting really nicely when we come along to sewing that down. And I'll start just before the opening, and I'm going to be stitching with a seam allowance of about 1 8 of an inch. We don't want the seam allowance to be too far in, otherwise we're not going to be sewing this opening closed. So just work out the best guide for you. And then I'm just going to stitch. When I come to the corners, I'm just going to do my best guess. Make sure the needle's down, lift the foot up and then carry on. And now I'm coming up to where I started, I'm just going to stitch past it and then do a back stitch. Trimming those threads and this time trimming them really nice and close. Okay, and then one last thing you might like to do, and this is totally optional, is to change your foot to a standard foot and then stitch around the edge of the ornament. Okay, and then trimming that thread really closely again. And then we have our little cute little finished coaster. So I hope you enjoyed today's project. Please leave a comment if you've got another idea of a project you'd like me to do. Don't forget you can find my cutting instructions over on my website and I'll put a link in the description below. Thanks so much for joining me and I'll see you again next week.